if you know you know it's really great let's do the titles we're gonna take on the world Hopefully in this episode, the lady of the boat won't try and set fire to the boat again. I'm still chuckling at that. I'll tell you, a couple of glasses of wine and all hell lets loose, doesn't it? I'll tell you, it's a really great episode. <laughs> See, I haven't videoed anything for the last couple of days. I haven't really been feeling it. So um, sometimes you just can't be asked, you know. But that's by the by anyway. Starting to get used to be glasses. Although I still feel a bit pissed when I'm wearing them. I haven't had a beer yet. And it is that time on a Friday, that time I like, um, between ending work and uh, Lee coming home with the Chinese. So, but uh, I might try something new in a minute. I might do a beer o'clock with Paulus Wood name because I went to Tesco's today and bought something. But anyway, that's by the by. We'll get to that in a minute. Because I've got a theory. You know how I like to try and make people think about things or have my own thoughts, say my own thoughts out loud. It, um, Ever wacko though, and this one's this one's out there, let me tell you. Right. My old mate Elle and Fiona, they talk about chemtrails and stuff. And I've always said, not sure about that. I know they have and can um, spray stuff into the atmosphere, and they do, okay? This is something that's absolute fact. Um, there are cloud seeding companies. There are companies that could break up the clouds for having a clear day for a wedding. You can hire them, especially in the United States more than anything, but they can be hired. So it is a proven thing that happens. And coincidentally, now this may have nothing to do with it, but um, do you know the floods in Dubai? Well, by all accounts, they were playing with some cloud seeding techniques a few days before that. Hmm makes you wonder doesn't it makes you wonder but anyway getting back to these um chemtrails um uh, first of all let's i mean i've, I've listened to various and vincent today he beat me to this one because this is what i want to say in this one actually what am i on about but anyway they don't go around in grid patterns every blooming commercial jet spraying a load of shit over populated areas i don't believe that for one moment that's my opinion um but there are some aircraft that don't appear on flight radar and that that do seem to be zigzagging across and leaving stuff in the sky. Again, I am in two minds about that. But here's the thing to think about, okay? If it is indeed true that they're changing weather like this, what makes you think that they're not doing it to fake a climate change thing or fake temperatures because obviously if you take away the clouds like they did last summer when it got 40 odd degrees at Heathrow you wonder what if they were doing that what if they're engineering it have you ever thought about that because I, I was it just came into my head and I thought well if it is true that they're well not that if it's true it is true they can cloud seed and all that sort of stuff that's just fact but what if they were doing it on an industrial scale and they were doing it as a scam to make you and me pay more money Scare the shit out of us, get some control on the human population. Coax us into not driving, so we have to stay in our little spots. Our silly 15 minute cities and all that lot. You do wonder, don't you? You do wonder. You do wonder indeed. Anyway, that's that for now. There was something else. Oh yeah, so as we're talking shit, or I'm talking shit, I was, uh, woke up again my normal time about 3.30 this morning. And I started getting to thinking about that bloody bridge again. And I have to say, right, it's really unacceptable. When you really think about it, it's awful because you can only use the marina. So remember, you, we pay full twat. So, and I'm not really talking about mainly because we live on a boat, it's different. We don't go out all the time. But think about people who have boats here and they like to go out the weekends or in the week or whatever. Well, they can only go out and come back in the hours from half eight in the morning till five in the evening. Otherwise, no one can open the bridge for them. 
Think about it, that's terrible. And our land moorings went up 10%. That can't be right, can it? And it's banging again, by the way. <laughs> Not as bad as it was, but it's getting there. So don't you think that's bad? I mean, I think ABC should hold their heads in, sh uh, uh, hold, bow their heads in shame, really, there. Honestly, they do, because they're taking the piss. If I was, if it was Tord and Deers, when Lee and I just came up here at the weekends to go out and about all the time, and that was restricting us, I'd be, I'll tell you what, I'd be going ape shit at them. I really would. What do you think? Do you think it's acceptable? That bridge now has been, it's almost a year. In June, it'll be a year that that bridge hasn't worked and it has to be hand opened and all this sort of stuff. I think, I wonder if they've just decided, well, that's how it's going to be now. So we can't come in and out as we please. We have to ring to be let out. Is that going to be permanent or are they going to fix the fucking bridge? Or are they going to take it away and replace it with something that actually works? Hmm. By all accounts, there's still planning permission going on for the top gate. Is that the top gate? Always get mixed up. That's north that way. The gate's that way. So the bottom gate. <laughs> There's planning permission for them to move that entrance, I believe. That's what we think. So I wonder if that's what they're planning. Leave the bridge alone. Then what they'll do is when that gate is opened and it can, you know, put a different gate there so it's easier to get in off the road. Are they then just going to leave the bridge in the open for boats position? And basically, this is um, two separate halves of the same marina. We, our half has access that way, and the other half of the moon has access that way. What about the bins? What about when you want to go and have a shower and stuff? Not that we do. I mean, obviously, we go to the bins. We've got our own shower, but some people do use the showers. What about emptying your Elson thing? I mean, we've got a compost toilet, so again, not so much of an issue for us. Although, you still have to get rid of your compost, your shit, basically. You're just shitting in a bucket, aren't you? Double bagging it and throwing it. That's the truth of it, isn't it? So, yeah. What do you think about that? Seriously, in the comments, let me know. Especially if you've got a boat yourself or you um, pay marina fees somewhere. And imagine if you were only allowed out or, a, you know, you, yeah, you could only get out between half eight and five in the night, half eight in the morning, five in the evening. Not right, is it? Not right. Anyway, that's that for now. I am actually going to go and have a beer o'clock. So I'm going to grab myself a beer because I've got something new because I went to Tesco's this morning. And um, I'll share it with you. Well, I won't share it with you. I'll show you it. We'll have a beer o'clock with Paulus Wood now, shall we? Might as well. Bye. Right then, I'm back, and look what I've got. It's a brew dog 21st century stout, and it's called Black Heart. A draft stout. United we stand for better beer. Fiercely defiant and independent. What have I got to do? I've got to invert the can once. Like that. You used to, you used to have to do this with Guinness, didn't you? So obviously this is another stout. And I'm not really a stout drinker, but because I've had a few um, other ones, I thought, well, might as well try this one because I saw it on the shelf. It's only children's portion. It's only a 440 mil um, thing to be a can, to be honest. So, but I thought I actually had a proper can of Guinness the other day, and it wasn't that bad. Oh blimey, that's making a right old noise, isn't it? Ooh. We'll see, won't we? Sometimes it's just nice to have a little change from Pilsner, which is what I have to drink most. I have to drink. That's the one that's not so bad for diabetes. Jesus, that's really black again, isn't it? I don't know why I put myself through this. I try these so that you don't have to, because I'm really lovely like that. There we go then. I don't think it says anything. No, nothing. It's 4.1% volume. Who knows? Dilly dilly, everyone. Happy Fridays. I don't know really what to make of that. It's not nasty, I would say. I would say it's, I think it's actually a bit close to Guinness, closer to Guinness that one. It's got a little bit of a coffee hint going on. But yeah, it's all right, I guess. I wouldn't buy it again. Well, I might, but only one can. I had to buy this in set of four. Dilly dilly, bye. Happy Saturdays everybody. Have a guess what? Come on, I can hear you guessing, I can hear your minds cranking over. I was going to say cranking one out but that's something completely different isn't it? <laughs> yeah but have a guess what though. 
You ready? Yes, the my rider's out again because the weather's picking up a bit. So I've just been out on it for a little recce just to make sure it's all all right again. And fair play, the battery stayed fully charged over winter, which I was surprised with. But anyway, we're going to have some more adventures on the my rider. My rider. <laughs> Part of the plan this year with the going out on the my rider, getting out and about a bit again, Obviously the normal stuff, I'll go and have a moan while I'm riding along. But also, because we've got the new 360 camera, I'm kind of getting into time lapses, because you can do some amazing things with these on time lapses. So I'm going to do a little load of time lapses from all over the, probably all over the country actually. And I might put them all together in one video, or I might put them all as little separate things, I don't know. But they're quite fascinating to watch. So um, I thought having the bike out there, I could go and do silly things. I could just go and have a pedal up to the motorway bridge and stick the camera up there for 15 minutes, do a time lapse of the cars and that going by and do something arty farty with them. Just saying, get the old creative juices going again. Because I feel I haven't done much photography and fannying around with arty stuff for a while. There you go. So that's my plan. See how that goes. Bye. Now, I wonder if that'd work without it falling off. It's always a bit nerve wracking putting stuff on like that because if the camera falls, then it's broke. But that gave a good 360 view when you're riding the bike. Not sure I trust the clamp. There is one that Insta360 do themselves, which is a lot stronger than this, so I might have to buy that. It's about 50 bloody quid. Just keeps adding up. All adding up. Well, I just thought I'd uh, put the camera on. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to really ride anywhere. Like I, said, I, don't, I might just have a little ride around here, just to see what the point of view is like. I think it looks quite cool, doesn't it? Oh, in the neck. I might turn it on, don't I? <laughs> That's better. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. No, I don't like the 360 cam there. I can feel it moving already. <laughs> yeah, it's moved in the clamp a little bit already. Yeah, well, I'll get a proper clamp because I think that'll look all right. You may remember a vlog or two back when we had St George's Day and I was bemoaning the fact of what happened down in London with the two-tier police and as I see it, not as I see it, it's just the way it was, um, trying to antagonise patriots, uh, looking for that headline and of course it got the headline because a couple of people tried to push through the police. It was just all about nothing, it was nonsense. But of course the mainstream media were then on this same old shit that the St George's Cross is racist. I'm sick to death of that saying. I'm sick to death of that card. It's ridiculous. Our, our own country's flag, racist. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? It's funny how Luton, Borough Council, had the Palestinian flag flying above the town hall. And uh, we've seen in London, in a couple of boroughs, they've been flying the Pakistani flag. What the fuck? Anyway, I digress. And obviously I'm not going to get into that right now, not on this vlog, perhaps on another vlog. But then because all the press were going on about it being racist and people shouldn't fly them because it antagonises. We've seen the things down in London going on with the free plasticine gobshites. And uh, 
that's all right. You can fly a jihadi flag and all that sort of stuff. But then you get anyone, maybe an Israel flag, but that'll get a bit of stick and the police will tell you off. But if you fly a St. George's Cross, oh, oh, oh. So with that in mind, I bought a couple of St. George's Crosses, which are the correct size for the flagpole on the back of our boat. And these will now be flown permanently. And it's that to all the people who think it's racist. You absolute muppets. This is my national flag and I will fly it. So there you go. And I ask every single one of you out there to fly your own flag. As long as it's English. No other flags in, in the UK. Can't have any of that. Anyway, I'm going to go and uh, put this on the back of Hannah. Bye. Not sure I'm going to get to the back. <laughs> I have to say, they look bigger than it should be. That's a bugger. There we go. I've taken a bit of paint off the tiller, so that's going to need a repaint, but you get the idea. Come on, England. See, he's all right once he settles down, isn't he? It's weird. No, don't bite it. his head gone <laughs> 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 you're so funny Hector happy Sundays everybody it's been a right old rush I've been rushed over to um, the manor to get this, which is the mount for the 360 camera. Look at my bike, it's not the um, Insta 360 version of it. It's actually one that gets cut the clamps and all sorts, but I'll show you that another day. Oh, I don't want to look at that now, but got, just before the game, Villa have got Brighton away. I've got a bad feeling about that one. But look at this, I've got found a, a brand new beer I've never seen before. So I like my old voice beers, let me put my glasses on. So beer o'clock with Paulus Wood now just before the football starts is an Erdinger Dunkel, whatever a Dunkel is. So what does it say? It says a lot of stuff in German. <laughs> Doesn't really say anything. Doesn't say anything about the beer. So who knows? It just says a Bavarian double maturity method. I don't know what percentage, what a doodah it is. I don't know, I can't see where it says that either. I'm not doing very well. Oh, 5.3. Woohoo! That's a good one. Oh, so Daisy, now I'm dropping me things. I'm getting too excited because the game's on. Anyway, let's have a little tasty, tasty, looky, looky. I'll give it a little wiggle. Oh, look, it's a dark one. How bizarre. I just expected a normal vice beer. Mm. This might be grim. Oh dear, I haven't done that very well, have I? <laughs> it's because they're coming out onto the pitch. I'm trying to do this too quickly. Well, it's going to take an hour to settle. I'll tell you what, I'll just drink some out of the bottle. That's quite nice, actually. It doesn't taste like anything dark. It still sort of tastes like a vice beer. I don't know. That's quite a unique flavour. I'd say give that a go. Yeah, that's all right. I say I can't really describe this one. It doesn't taste like a lager. It doesn't quite taste like a full-on wheat beer. So it's obviously not. It's a dunkel. <laughs> a dunkel. Anyway, come on to Villa. I'll speak to you after the game when I'm depressed because I can't see it going well for Villa today. Don't know why. I just had that feeling. Bye. I was right, Villa lost. So uh, we're not in the uh, European places yet. We're still fourth. 
But I tell you, it was a really boring game. It's awful, dodgy old penalty. I tell you what, I've probably had more excitement using waxing strips on Lee's sheriff's badge. That's how exciting that was. Anyway, in other news, Hector um, had a proper pop at the swans. Well, earlier on, right, there's this swan. This is before the game. It was just being a dick, and it was at Sue's boat, pecking into her hatch, and wouldn't go away. Lee, uh, Sue was trying to shoo it away, and it wouldn't go. And then I thought, well, I'm not having that. So I, had to, I lifted Hector up because I thought, well, he's going to go for it if I don't lift him up. And I just went over to it and shooed it off, you know, showered it, and it, and it, it, it jumped into the water. And I thought, well, that's the end of it. Well, no, that wasn't the end of it. Second half at the Villa game, I could see Hector looking at it. And I thought, hmm, because the bloody thing was on the side again. Then it decided to cross the road and all hell let loose because Hector weren't having none of that. So Hector went for it, had a little nip at it, and then Molly was here as well. Molly pulled the lead out of uh, Sue's hand, <laughs> went for it all, backing up her mate. See, I don't think that swan's coming back. <laughs> Hector's so mighty on it, he's scared of nothing. He's a proper mighty hound. I'll tell you what, I think that swan shat itself. <laughs> Bye. Lee, yes? what are you doing? Under the water. Are you raking? She's underwater raking everybody. Not even sure what to say about life. Oh, look at that. Look. Is that like ragamuffin weed? <laughs> you just want to draw a face on it, didn't you? Not really sure what she's doing. So I don't know what this is. Do you, Hector? Is it ragweed? Yeah. Do you want some cheese grated on my nice little cheese grater? <laughs> so what's on the menu tonight, this evening, darling? Tonight, this yeah. evening, I say. Four cheese tortellini. No, oh, I bought them. That's stunning that I bought those, isn't it? With some mushrooms, onion. Well, no, onions. Well, with salad. So mushroom, uh, onions, mushrooms, peppers, tomatoes, lettuce. What, you're cooking that all in the same pan? No. That's for the salad. Pancetta is going in there. Bit so, of parmesan. I'll tell you what's, what we're cooking, or what Lee's cooking. We're having, um, what are they called? Tortino, Torotinos, or whatever they're called. Tarantino, Christian, what are they, Lee? Tortellinis. Tortellinis, which are four cheeses. We're going to cook us them, and then there's going to be some, um, we've got some Campbell's condensed mushroom soup. That's going to be cooked with some raw mushrooms, all in the same thing. And then on, uh, she's going to put some pancetta in there. That'll all be cooked together. Then on the side, we'll be having some salad. And perhaps, if, we're not, if we've not had enough, we might have some Doritos and dips. Because, bloody hell, how much were dips now, Lee? £3.20! That's outrageous! Do you remember that was like a quid? It's all too much, isn't it, Lee? Do you like putting my mushroom in your mouth? Yes. <laughs> Say bye. Bye. I was trying to video it and Lee just did what what's in there then? Pancetta and mushrooms. Is pancetta just ham really? Yeah, it's kind of fatty fatty ham. Lee. What? Suck me fatty. <laughs> Lee? Mm -hmm. Is that called a little knob or something? Little gem. Oh, I thought it was a, like a knob or is it a cob? German, it's cos lettuce, not cob. Oh. The cob is a bread roll. Oh. Nothing to do with knobs then. Uh. Mm. Okay, bye.
Look at him. He's all worn out after his swanage. Don't you have to fix him? Oh, look at that, eh? So what have we got then, darling? Well, I know we kind of explained it, but... Tortellini. So let's, no, let's just go down here. So that looks rather resplendent, doesn't it? Tortellini with a mushroom and pancetta sauce. Um, Parmesan grated, very lovely. I'm fine with my lovely fine grater. <laughs> ah! Salad, coleslaw and various dressings. Wow. There we go. Would you like a drink? I'm all right, Petal. I'm going to get myself a glass of wine. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to know a secret, everyone? It's actually the next day, isn't it, Lee? <laughs> but we need to finish a vlog to start a new vlog. <laughs> so sort of happy Bank Holiday Mondays. Um, we've just been to B&Q to buy a blowtorch. <laughs> so let's see Lee be a pyromaniac in the next vlog. So <laughs> thank you all for watching and all that sort of nonsense. Don't forget me thumb up your bum and all that sort of stuff. And thank you to all you buy me a coffee people. You're very fabulous and lovely. And um, we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.